Okay, sorry for the delay, folks. So the new firmware, there's direct, there's a new tab at the top of the, the router user interface. I don't think that's happened for since the Max product line came out. So kind of a dramatic shift for your eyeballs if you're used to looking at our, our router interface, but there's a lot of great stuff here. So the first thing we can do, if we look at which locations we wanna choose, you can select them here. And so I'm just gonna clear these out and kind of start over. So when you first enable SpeedFusion Cloud, when you first register that license, that's what's gonna expose this tab here. So if you haven't done that, check our form out. There's a registration process so you can get the demo set up. Uh, but once you've done that, this tab is gonna show up and right away you can just choose which location. By default, you can just choose automatic. It works great. It's gonna choose the, the closest location to you based on latency. Um, but you can also just manually select which locations you wanna to connect to. So I'm just gonna choose, you can choose up to three of them. I'm gonna choose just a few of them here. I'm gonna say Japan, New York, and let's go to London as well. Okay, so if I click Apply Changes, the router is going to automatically start establishing connections to all three of those cloud locations. Another really cool thing you can do though is you can modify these just like you would a normal SpeedFusion profile. So you can create all kinds of different different tunnel profiles that are then going to be mirrored on the on the other side of the SpeedFusion cloud so that you get all the performance benefits that you want from each mode. So let's say the default tunnel will make hot failover. And so I'm gonna make my broadband the highest priority. And then I've got three cellular interfaces that we can fail over to. Now, if you're not very familiar with the connection priority down here, I'll explain how this works. If you're choosing links in a certain priority and, and then you have a, a link in another priority, the tunnel is only going to actively use whatever links are in the highest priority. If you have more than one link in a priority group, that means you're basically bonding those links together. So in this case, we are using just the broadband if that's available. And if that fails, then we're gonna fail over to a bonded cellular connection. And so you're actually combining hot failover and bonding in this profile. Now you can also do things like WAN smoothing with SpeedFusion Cloud. So we're gonna put that at normal. So normal, if you're not sure about WAN smoothing, you can read the tool tip here. Basically, it's a packet redundancy protocol so that you can lower your average latency for latency sensitive applications like voice over IP. And you can basically eliminate packet loss. As long as you've got a couple links in play, you can, you can duplicate your traffic so that you're always getting the best performance on every single packet and you're gonna get completely seamless failover if, if one of those links drops. You're not even gonna hear audio drop for a second. You can also do forward air correction with SpeedFusion Cloud now. So forward air correction is somewhat similar to WAN smoothing, but it's different in, a, in another way. It's a lot more efficient. So your overhead is gonna be a lot lower. Instead of duplicating your packets, you're only generating either 13 or 26% overhead. So you're sending some parity bits to kind of help you reassemble packets if there's packet loss. Uh, forward air correction is usually great for video streaming. Uh, it's not as ideal for audio streaming. Uh, audio is a lot more sensitive to latency. Usually video streams, even live ones, have a little bit of buffering in them. And so forward air correction needs just a small amount of time. Just, you know, we're talking milliseconds to reassemble those packets. So again, forward air correction, usually great for video. WAN smoothing, usually more ideal for real-time voice. But Again, with SpeedFusion Cloud, you can now utilize these technologies. And again, these settings are mirrored on the other side. So you've got really easy setup of these.
Some other cool things you can do is you can connect specific devices to the cloud. So you can still use the outbound policies to steer traffic to the cloud, and we'll show you how that works in a second, but you can also just pick individual clients and choose where, they, where you want them to go. So I could send this AP1 over to Japan if I wanted. So you can just, it'll automatically populate your client list so you can pick and choose clients and basically enforce them to tunnel all their traffic to whichever SpeedFusion cloud node you want. So if you've got a reason to pop up in Japan, you can just choose your iPhone or, or laptop or whatever device and have the, all of that device's traffic tunneled to whichever node you choose. One of the other great new features in SpeedFusion Cloud is the ability to tie an SSID to a SpeedFusion Cloud node. And I think this is awesome because it's just super straightforward, really easy to, to implement. So, like we saw earlier, we have connections to three different SpeedFusion Cloud nodes. And what you can do is you can take your reference SSID, which in this particular router I've got one set up, WPA3Test, and so you can build on that profile. So that's a profile already established in my router, and we'll go take a look at that in a second. Um, but you can tie that to the SpeedFusion Cloud node then. And so what it's going to do automatically is it's going to just build on that SSID name and then add these underscores for the location. And so I can just click plus there and accept that. Um, let's say I want to get a little more fancy for London we can customize it any way we want instead of taking the auto suggested profile. And so I'll save those and apply the changes and then we'll go take a look at how this all works. So first thing I'll do is I'll show you that in initial profile. So Here's that WPA3 test profile that we built on as our reference. And so what we're doing here is we're cloning this profile uh, for each SpeedFusion Cloud node location. And so it's going to have the same encryption key that you've got on here. So it's going to have the exact same settings that the, that the reference profile has. And if we go to the dashboard, we can see those different networks active now. And so here you can see the, the reference SSID profile, WPA3Test, is shown there, and then these SpeedFusion Cloud-specific profiles have the little cloud icon next to them, so you can see that. I want to point out to, we've got our deep packet inspection application steering feature that's been out, uh, I think, since eight, firmware 800. Um, but you need to enable expert mode to expose this capability. Expert mode's already turned on on this router, but if it's not on yours, you just open this tooltip here, and you'll be able to see the expert mode link to enable that. Once you do that, what you're able to do is you're able to use our deep packet inspection technology to steer specific applications to different tunnel profiles. So if I say the destination is SpeedFusion Cloud, I can say New York City, and then I can choose application. And so, like I said, the DPI signatures have expanded greatly in this firmware. And so if we look under voice over IP, you can see there's several things. So it's not just voice over IP, it's also like WebEx and Zoom, Skype. So it's a uh, voice over IP and whatever uh, web content sharing platforms you guys are using as well. So if we just choose that, then I can say I want to send that to 
I want to send that to my WAN smoothing profile so that I can guarantee that those streams don't get interrupted and we don't have a bad experience on, on a webinar or something like that. So that's how you can use those multiple tunnel profiles that you create in the Speed Fusion Cloud. The other thing that I want to point out is these application rules are going to assume that you're already sending uh, traffic to that tunnel and then you're further steering it to the right tunnel profile that you created. So next I'll show you the speed fusion, the new speed fusion graphs. So if you look at the speed fusion status page, you're going to see a normal tunnel that I've got here and then we've got several tunnels and, and sub tunnels connected to the speed fusion cloud. You get the little cloud icon over here. So if we start opening these up, we'll just take a look. So here you can see we've got the hot failover tunnel. And so as we told it to, it's only using the broadband actively right now. And it's got the cellular in standby, ready to ready to take over if the broadband were to fail. The other profiles, we've just got everything in priority one. So you can see they're both active at the same time. Okay, the first question, what models support Speed Fusion Cloud? I love this question because it's easy. All of our all of our products support Speed Fusion Cloud except for Fusion Hub. Fusion Hub's already in the cloud, so that doesn't connect to Speed Fusion Cloud itself. But you can connect a router to one of your own Fusion Hubs and Speed Fusion Cloud simultaneously if you if you so choose to. See another question: Can you have more than one cellular connection up simultaneously? I, I'm assuming that question is referring to a Speed Fusion, either Speed Fusion Cloud or a regular Speed Fusion profile, and the answer is yes if you have a product that supports bonding. So you need a router that supports speed fusion bonding. And again, like I showed in the, in the GUI, you just need to set those cellular connections to the same priority group inside of that speed fusion profile. So any connections you link in the same priority group will be bonded together. Another question is asking for a use case for speed fusion cloud. So again, Speed Fusion Cloud is just taking the infrastructure out of, out of people's hands so that you can rapidly deploy Speed Fusion SD-WAN without having to set up the infrastructure side. So there's lots of benefits, right? If you want to protect voice over IP traffic, if you want to get faster uploads to Google Drive or Dropbox, um, if you're a video streamer and you travel all over the world, you're going to want to connect to different cloud nodes regardless of where you're at instead of having to set up nodes all around the world. Uh, so those are some examples of, of reasons you might use the Speed Fusion Cloud. But in, in short, it's just to be able to get the benefits of Speed Fusion without having to set up that remote side of it. It's just automating that whole, that whole setup process for you.